Hi you guys! Welcome back to a, another sew along. I am Lindsay and this is my YouTube channel Inside the Hem. If you are here from Seamwork, welcome. We are doing another sew along together. This time it's for their Fallon woven jogger pants. This episode is what I call episode zero. It's pretty much all the prep work and everything you need to do before we actually get into the sewing of the pattern. So we are going to cover everything from fit to fabric choices. I've got some inspiration from Pinterest and like ready to wear inspiration for us to look at. Um, so it should get you nice and inspired and get you all the information that you need to get ready to uh, pick your size, cut out your pattern, make any alterations that you need to make, and cutting out your fabric pieces. If you need some help staying organized, uh, staying motivated, staying on track, I have a free workbook that I do with all my sew alongs um, and you can download it at the link in the description box. It's completely free. Um, it's just like a helpful little resource for you to follow along with while you participate in the sew along. So without further ado, let's get to checking out the Fallon pattern. All right, so let's get into it. This is the Seamwork Fallon Jogger Pants Sewing Pattern. Super cute, right? We get to the pattern flats. We can see some more of the design details. So we've got an elastic waist band slash pockets. We've got a cargo pocket that kind of wraps around just one leg. Um, and then these like knee patches. There's also elastic at the ankle as well. In addition, there are these back pockets that kind of like disappear into the side seam, which is unique and interesting. And then on the inside, you can see it's unlined, um, but we have like a little bit of a waistband facing. We have same thing for the ankle, like a casing for the ankle elastic. And then you can see the finishing details on the pockets too. I love that they include the insides. Okay, so now we are getting into fit. So before we do that, let me show you some other inspiration pictures that I found from our good friend Pinterest. <laughs> okay, so all I did was type in woven cargo pants elastic outfit. Um, and this, this is the results. So you can see here, even if you think that jogger style pants are not your vibe, I want you to take a look at some of the different types of styles we have here, how they're styling them, how they're wearing them, the shoes, the shirts they're pairing with them, um, and see if maybe it is a little bit more your style. Like maybe you think, oh, I can't pull off um, cargo pants because, you know, my style is a little bit more glamorous. Well, maybe we can find something a little bit, you know, silky or, you know, satiny. Or maybe you think, you know, I can't pull off jogger pants because I don't like to wear sneakers. Well, then we can find some that have like different types of flats or sandals that you can wear. Get what I'm going with this? So on, also, I want you to pay attention to fabrication as we look through this as well. That'll help you pick your fabrics for your joggers. So um, you can see there's a lot of neutrals, right? I think that that kind of lends itself to the like where the inspiration for cargo pants even come from like the military and all that hunting all that stuff um so we've got a lot of olive green we've got a lot of khaki um and then we'll see a lot of denim too and then there's you know if you're a colorful girl make them colorful you can see what those look like here Here's a blue pair. That's probably a, um, like a chino. That's what I'm seeing a lot of so far. All of these are like chino type, um, fabrics. So chino, twill, um, here is an actual camo fabric. Um, but all of these are woven. Okay. None of these have any stretch in them at all. These here have a little bit more drape to them you can see that here these are probably some kind of linen or maybe even just like a tightly woven cotton think like gosh like but lawn batiste something like that <clears throat> we also have i do love that rust color here's one that's like a little bit more satiny yeah satin cargo joggers Right? So if you think you're like more of a dressy kind of girl, here's some satin ones. And look, they even dressed them down with sneakers. That's super cute, a little outfit. Easy to pull off. 
Um, we have a lot of them just simply being paired with t-shirts, tank tops, something tucked in or like a crop top. You don't have to show your belly, but um, just like a fitted tee is what we're mostly seeing here. Some people are pairing it with another layer for fall with like a oversized button down, um, a lightweight jacket of some kind. She doubled up her t-shirts. That's really cute. Kind of throwback to the 90s that we're seeing a lot. All right. And as we talk about fit too, remember how some of these are fitting. We've got some looser fitting ones. We've got closer fitting ones. It really kind of runs the gamut. Um, like these have hardly any ease in them at all. So do these have barely any ease, although they are Shein. So there's a whole debate to be had there. Um, but these are really loose and kind of like balloony. So again, think about how you want yours to fit, how you want yours to look um, before we get into picking fabrics and things like that. But you're going to choose a woven fabric um, with a lit you know a little bit of drape will be nice that'll help give you kind of the not if you don't want them to balloon out right if you don't want them to stand away from body intentionally then you're going to want to have a little drape so what that means is something like tencel twill so twill weave is super tight right structured but the tencel the rayon makes it a little bit more drapey um something like this is like super drapey um, that might even be like a, like a cotton, like a loosely woven cotton. Think like gauze, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Um, and then, like I said before, your twills, your chinos, you can do corduroy. Look how cool that is. The corduroy should have a, like a letter weight corduroy. You definitely don't want something that's like, you know, that would make like a, super stiff jacket you want it to have a little bit of drape even this quarter where you can see has some folds in the fabric um denim's an option linen that's what this is probably so yeah lots and lots of options and then you can also if you're if you find something that you super super love like let's say let me find one that's like from a store maybe sophie and Haley. all right sophie and Haley. here we go description mineral wash cargo jogger features 10 cell washed fabrics so you know we've got like a rayon like a distressed rayon probably a twill so you can go in and, and learn a little bit about the fabrics from the from the listing okay hopefully that helps you there now regarding fit both are drafted for a height of 5 8 so both of these are for 5 8 okay and then here is your ease chart. So you don't need to do the fast fit worksheet on this. They do all the work for you. You are going to look at the, take your measurements from the measurement chart. Measurement chart coming, coming, coming. Okay. So you're going to find your hip measurement. Waist again, we're not going to worry about waist too much. We're going to look at the hip first. And you're going to see like, am I a zero, zero to 18? Like, I think my measurements came in at like 46, but I know I'm curvier, right? Than, than this. I have more of a difference between my waist and my hip. And I know that a full seat adjustment usually does me well, having more room in the bum. So even though I can use either of the categories I opted for the curvy category because I knew that I could make this smaller size and well actually I was in between sizes um I can make the smaller size and get a little bit more room for my bum which is where most of my hip measurement comes from anyways um and because I was in between sizes to determine whether or not I should size down or size up I went back up here to the east chart and could see there is four and three quarters in the misses, five and a quarter in the curvy, five and a quarter in the hip is a lot. So I know I can size down and I will be just fine. Okay. So then on top of all of that fit wise, I also implemented the top down center out pants fitting method. If I just do like a quick and dirty version. You know me, I'm not spending a lot of time over fitting clothes especially 
elastic waist, loose fitting jogger pants, right? So try not to overthink it too much. Here's where I got when I did my top down center out. I took this quick little video. Um, so you can see how the pants are fitting. I ended up increasing the back rise by two whole inches and then increasing the front rise by, I think five eighths, three quarters. Um, and then I was able to remove some from the back and add some to the front. Now I know that seems counterintuitive for someone that has a full bum, but that's just how this worked out for me. I, again, try not to overthink it. I just do what the top down center me out method teaches me. <laughs> and that's what I go with. Um, but you can also see here in this little video, I went ahead and like pinned on where the pockets are supposed to go. And you can see that, I mean, I'm 5'5", five five, okay? So I already knew these were gonna be too long by three inches, but that knee patch starts at the top of my knee. That's not it. It's not a shin guard, it's a knee patch. So I knew I needed to move that up. And then if I'm moving that up, then the cargo pocket needs to be moved up. And if that's being moved up, then the back pocket needs, you know what I mean? So because I added to the rise and I have a shorter inseam, I had to do some funky work with the length measurement. Once I got the circumference figured out, then I started playing around with length. And I'll show you all of this in my pattern pieces and how I made the adjustments here in a second. I wanted to make sure that like in these photos, how the knee patch starts at her mid thigh, I wanted to make sure that mine did that. Um, I also was considering too, how am I going to wear these? Am I a heel girly? Am I a sneaker girly? Am I a ballet flat? Like, how am I gonna wear them? Because that determines where these end on your ankle. I love to have a little bit of ankle showing. I think it's super, super flattering and very feminine. And I do have a feminine aspect to my style, even though it's not overly feminine anymore, it used to be, um, there is still an element of that. And I think this is a little bit more feminine than say, you know, something that comes all the way down to the top of the foot. I wanted mine to end at my ankle. I also wanted my rise to be at my waist, at my natural waist. That's just the most flattering for me. Um, so I factored that in when I did top down center out, right? So you're starting to consider this pattern fitting the way you want it to fit, not necessarily the way that they want it to fit. And in conjunction with that, in addition to that, you're also making sure that some of these details are correct for you. I mean, the knee patch was way down here for me. So that wasn't going to cut it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So looking at these um, models, wearing them, looking at how it fits you whenever you do your little muslin mock-up for top down center out, um, determine the fit changes you're going to make. Here's what they did for everyone in this photo. So because it's size inclusive, they have Ryan, who I think is one of the husbands. How cute is he? Um, and they have his, um, measurements and how they altered it for him. Same thing with Tambry, same thing with Sarah. So if you feel like you are represented here somewhere, you can look at these and see what they did. All right. So let me turn the camera, um, to show you my alterations that I made and just kind of how my patterns ended up looking. All right. So first things first, we're going to take a look at the actual pants pattern and you can see when I did top down center out I ended up adding two inches to the back rise this is the back pattern piece and when I did that I went ahead and moved up my pocket so that that was sitting centered on my bum and this isn't hard and fast right I can change this after I get all my pattern pieces cut out and I start sewing it and I want to go to apply it to the to the um and I apply the pocket to the pants, I can adjust that a little bit. This is just, you know, me trying to plan ahead a little bit. <clears throat> then this is where I removed a ton of length. This um, section here, I just, there is a, right here, a length and shorten line, but I also think it's important to have a length and shorten line that's above the knee patch. They didn't put that in, so I just made my own. You just wanna make sure that it's perpendicular to the grain line. I think there was like a set of notches here or something and that's what I used for mine. 
Um, and then I just shortened it by those four inches. And then coming down here, no adjustments were made below the knee patch. That's the back pattern piece. Oh, and when I shortened it, I did have to fill in the inseam a little bit. So this is where the original line was. When I shortened it, I had this big gap right here. So I just filled that in on the inseam and a little bit on the outseam as well. For the front, um, I added just a little bit. This is that five eighths, I think, three quarters, something like that, to the front rise. Again, based on top down, center out. And then I shortened it again by my four inches. You can see that here. Transferred the markings so that they came through the, you know, paper so I could see them better. Um, yeah, and then I, these are just my marking, my notes for where my ankle was landing, where it needs to land, all of that. And I just cut out the straight 12 here for the front. The back, though... It was a little too roomy and that's when you get into like diaper territory. So I did end up taking a big chunk out of this here and just straightened it out a little bit. So yours might come out a little bit more if you make the curvy one. Maybe I could have gotten away with making the straight size. I don't know. At this point, I was like too far in to the curvy to, <laughs> to, to go down that path. But so I just used the top down center out method to determine this is how much I wanted to take it in. And remember, you're not taking it in to be close fitting. You still have to have a lot of room for your waistband, um, for the elastic and to get it up over your hip. But my back, despite how big my butt is, <laughs> which is way down here, my the small of my back is really narrow. It's really quite narrow. And a lot of my waist measurement comes from the front actually. So this makes common sense to me and my body. All right, now, once you get that taken care of, you do want to um, apply the adjustments that you made to the top of the pattern. Those get applied to your waistband pieces. So for me, I had to remove from the back and add to the front. And then on here, this is the um, knee patch. So whenever you shorten the front, hold on. When you shorten the front pattern piece, this doesn't fit where it's supposed to anymore, right? It ends up being, the knee patch ends up being too narrow for the pants. So you do have to redraft it. You can see here are the original lines and here's where I added to fill in. And now when you line up the number 12 with the number 12 here, it lines up perfectly. So you just wanna kind of redraft the knee patch if you shorten your inseam at all. Um, okay, so that's that. And then no changes to the cargo pocket because that's just kind of on the side. And pocket lining stayed the same. The pocket itself stayed the same, which is somewhere. Here's the pocket itself. Oh, that's not true. I did have to add to the top of the pocket to match the new rise that I have in the front. And it does take a little bit of a curve for the, cause this is the, this is like the closer to your belly button and this is your side seam. So as it's going up, we're going from that five eighths blending into the two inches that I added in the back, right? It's kind of taking that path. Um, this doesn't have to be perfect either. This just has to be close so that when you're going to sew it, you're not, you're not missing this huge chunk um, from the top of your pocket, not matching up to the top of your pants. So that was that. Everything else about that stayed the same. Here's the back pocket. That stayed the same. Um, what else do we have here? These are the adjustments to the um, waistband and the bottom of the cargo pocket. Um, this, wait, one of them, yes. Okay, sorry, so the back pack, because the back ends into the side seam, and I did take a whole bunch out of the side seam of the back pants, I did have to chop off a little bit of this too. And then I just transferred the dots to make sure that they were, you know, five eighths in from the side seam. Just copying what they had done, just kind of, I guess instead of shortening it this way, I narrowed it. So you wanna think about it even going like, doing like this number it was basically kind of a version of this just a lot smaller does that make sense 
Um, okay, so this all stayed the same. All right, so yeah, those are my pattern pieces. That's all my fabric cut out. Um, you can see from the list of materials that you need, you'll also, in addition to cutting out your fabric, will need to go ahead and grab sewing thread, right? A sewing needle, braided elastic. I'm using this stuff. I'm 99% sure I got it from um, Joanne, but I'm not sure. It's soft, it's like smooth to the touch, but it's, it's still a little bit malleable. I don't like that stuff that's like hard. Um, so I like it to be a little bit more comfortable. I do think also, if you look at the Pinterest inspiration, there were some that had like a, a waistband that was a little bit taller and had like smaller channels. I think that's really cute too. If you are someone that wants to like draw more attention to your waist, um, you can do that by adding, like making the waistband a little bit taller and then adding multiple channels of like quarter inch or three inch in elastic doing like two or three of those, making it more of like a like a true jogger, like a, you know, like more athletic. Um, that was a really cute detail I saw on Pinterest as well. Um, okay, so you need elastic for the waistband and elastic for the ankle. Um, again, consider your own ankles <laughs> if you want one and a quarter inch elastic or if you want one inch elastic or no elastic, you know what I mean? So consider all of that as well. And then a safety pin or some kind of bodkin to pull all that elastic through the casings when we're done. All right, there you go. That is all the information you need before we get started sewing. If you are feeling overwhelmed in any way about picking your size, about your fabric choice, about anything before you cut out your fabric and get ready to sew, um, you can book me for a one-on-one -on -one private 30-minute video Zoom consultation. Um, I have the link for that in the description box so I can help you figure anything out, answer any questions that you might have before you get to the actual sewing of the patterns. So if you need any help, just let me know and book me for a consult. But that is going to do it for this video. We are going to jump right into sewing in episode one. So I'll see you there.